I was trying to put myself uh, in their minds and understand what it is that they have to worry about and think about. Uh, and so in preparing it, you know, I focused on this point about the generational divide and I've talked widely around about this and maybe have come to understand better than I had how complicated it is. Uh, that it's not just every generation, it's the wrong word actually, um, it's every few years, uh, it makes a difference as to how you relate to technology and how you relate to the information environment and communication environment which, is now, which now surrounds you. So it's not just you know, somebody over 50 uh, or even over 60 who has to be conscious of being on the wrong side of this divide. You might even be 35 when you're early 30s and you'll have a different approach and you'll have been brought up in a different way with of course different capabilities around you uh, and it's quite difficult to understand exactly what it's like uh, and what you're thinking if you're 16 uh, and of course by definition therefore that is a challenge for for teachers and particularly probably the head teachers uh, so that's where I um, started from uh, and that's where I tried to give advice you know, based, on, uh, based on that thought. Of course, it was a different world then, and it is just worth uh, remembering this. It was a different world. 1971, it was the time of the Cold War, and it's changed very quickly. In 1998, there were one million users of the Internet, and that was mainly in the United States, uh, and that was the year in which um, G Google was founded. Now, I don't know about you, but it doesn't seem that long ago to me, 1998. We now have the world we live in now, and of course we're talking all the time about the Internet of Things. Uh, virtually every week some new information is coming out, some new device is coming out, some new practice is coming out, some new security rule is coming out. We have multiple channels of communication, emails, you know, I'm almost embarrassed to say to people that I correspond mainly by email because straight away that puts me in the older generation. Uh, we have, uh, uh, of course, social media um, in all the forms that it takes, chat rooms, text messaging, Twitter, free messaging through WhatsApp, and so on. As a result of that, a vast amount of information uh, is available to a wide audience. Well, I didn't talk about schools as institutions being subject to cyber attack, but of course the individuals within schools are vulnerable, uh, just like anybody else. Uh, and of course, as, as young people, uh, as children, um, uh, or almost adults, they may be more vulnerable uh, than, uh, than, uh, than many, uh, because they don't have the, the, uh, the knowledge and experience of the outside world in the same way. Uh, and of course there are plenty of people around who are looking to do them harm. Uh, and uh, you know, that is a major problem and a, and a major threat. It's the enormous growth in uh, what is really criminal um, activity, much of it which of course can be international. Um, anybody, I'd say, or almost anybody, well anybody by definition over 50, will have been well into their professional career uh, before even emails became normal and familiar. A 35-year-old now will have been at university just at the moment when mobile phones were coming in to more general use. I mean, you can probably date it when they went to university, they weren't around, and when they left, they were around. Uh, now, in, in my experience, but I've not done a scientific study of this, um, that generation is going to be instinctively more cautious about what they put out there. But of course, once you get younger, early 20s and teens, it's changing virtually every year. Well, it is changing every year. Uh, people have grown up with it. They're much more comfortable with the environment. They feel they understand it better. They may not, but they feel they do. They're more relaxed, and they're just more open. You know, what does it mean for you, I think, and I've been asked to think about this, who are responsible for uh, for those young people and for their education. How do you feel confident that you really understand the information environment in which, uh, in which they're living? And it's not just you, it's all of us, parents, uh, grandparents. And so if I can just offer just a few words of you know, personal advice, they're not necessarily expert uh, words, but 
personal advice on this that I think um, are relevant. The first is that we all must resist the temptation to somehow sort of opt out of um, technological change. We must make sure that as far as possible we understand it and we understand therefore the context in which um, our students live and our young people live. We must encourage them to understand for themselves the, uh, the environment in which uh, they live. On a practical point, and I'll get a little bit technical here, uh, we must do it what we can to facilitate the teaching of cybersecurity in schools. Going back to a more basic point is emphasizing strong values. In such a transparent society, it's even more important than before for personal behavior uh, to follow clear values, what I'm calling their strong personal values. It's just common sense. It's always been like this. Think carefully about your personal relationships and how you conduct them. Respect personal privacy. Now think carefully about what you say and write now, now that there are so many channels down which you can express yourself. You know, old advice, such as if you don't have something nice to say about somebody, don't say it. You know, if you talk too much or write too much, you'll end up saying something stupid. So just think about it, be careful. This has been common sense and you know, a matter of personal integrity ever since any of us can remember, but it implies even more sharply uh, um, than uh, it did before, I would say. The sheer uh, scale of effective intrusion um, uh, into uh, people's personalities, personal lives, activities, thoughts and opinions, uh, which now in effect takes place, either deliberately or, or not deliberately, the sort of the transparency which is there, uh, and of course they know that that's there, but you sometimes have to think about the detail what that actually means in terms of the data which actually can be out there uh, about health, about uh, friendships, about movements, and I talked about that in particular. So you know, it's always worth just reminding people just to think through you know, in detail what that means on a day-by-day -day basis, although most people here will you know, know that anyway. Um, and then I try to elevate it to a slightly higher level um, and say, well, what it comes down to, of course, is applying established old values, really. Uh, that uh, it's respect for privacy, respect for uh, personal um, uh, um, sort of relationships, uh, um, just thinking carefully about you know, what you're saying, what you're writing, if you're just expressing a, an, an opinion, um, uh, you know, being respectful towards some other people, um, just behaving with personal integrity. And that's always been important, uh, but maybe it's particularly important when it is so easy uh, to communicate.